We had a real marathon of a show last time, Mike. I was tired, very tired. I think I'm still tired. I don't remember what it was. I just know I had some plans after last episode that as soon as I was done recording, I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to sit on the couch and I'm going to watch Netflix until I fall asleep on the couch. And that's going to be the rest of my day. And it was. It was a it was a real <laughs> it was a real day. I'm very happy for you because we recorded the episode a little bit late, so my task that evening was to start editing it. <laughs> so I think that's why I'm oh, still tired. <laughs> I'm sorry. So you had to, you had to go through that conversation twice in one day. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. <laughs> I have occasionally done the record and edit on the same day, and it's. In some ways, it's easier because it's fresh in your head, mm -hmm. but in some ways, it's it's ten times more exhausting, yep. and particularly for an episode like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but you did get me the edit, and I just have this little point of feedback, which <laughs> it's a point of feedback for me on that episode, because I was listening during this edit, and it will never cease to amaze me how, listener, if you ever, if you ever start a podcast, you think... Oh, I can just talk. And ideas come out of my head and they and they make sense. And I say them into the air and they go out there. And it's like that's how we all work, right? Like and that's just every day you say things yeah. because that's a good idea, or like that's interesting, is you're just talking. It's how people communicate. Yeah, you think you're just talking, and it is only when when you have to listen to yourself that you are faced with the reality of how poorly you communicate ideas sometimes. And I was listening to myself in that episode and I kept thinking, when is this idiot going to make this fundamental point clear? And spoiler, he never did. And it's, it's always like, it's always just such an amazing disassociative experience to hear yourself on a podcast in important conversations. It's like, this isn't clear at all. So we, we were having a discussion about podcasts versus YouTube and all of the algorithms and like this whole thing. Mm -hmm. and you were the heroic defender of podcasters in this conversation. Sure. I believe. is mm -hmm. that I think that's what it was. And, like, I kept trying to agree with you, but I was doing it in just the worst way. So let me, let me try to just say the thing now that I wish I had said in the last episode, which is part of the reason I mentioned podcasts as an example is precisely because they don't have these algorithmic properties that we were discussing last time that like YouTube does, where YouTube learns what keeps you there. And the reason it was such a red flag for me, my podcasting behavior, is precisely because I felt like, oh, my brain has been put into like a like a weakened less attentive, full, less focused state by all of the algorithmic content that it is exposed to. So that even in a scenario like with podcasts where those algorithms don't exist, I'm still acting almost as though they do because my brain has been trained this way. So that's why it struck me as like a real red flag behavior because like the algorithms aren't even here but I'm still, I've been trained in this pattern of information consumption that is being spread out into other places where information consumption can be easier or simpler than something like reading a book. So that's, that's all it was. I, like, I feel like this is a relatively straightforward sentence that I just somehow never said in the show. That, so that's, that's, that's all. That's my like point of follow up for past me and his inability to say this particular point. So I think I think I'm understanding you. Like what you're saying is you just can't stop binging them because your brain continues to tell you to do that even though the medium isn't necessarily made for that. I've built this little loop of going in a circle between a bunch of websites where I'm just like, oh, I'm checking this place and then I'm going over here and I'm reading this comment thread and then I'm going back and I'm reading this other comment thread and then I return back to the place that I just came from even though nothing has changed. I will tell you, since we recorded that episode, I've been much more aware of me doing that stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> I've just noticed that like, and it's something that you, it comes up every now and then that like you open an app, close the app and open it again. Mm-hmm. 
But I've just been much more aware of my personal loops and patterns than I think I have been before. That's, that's interesting to hear. It is such a funny thing. And I, I, I think it's easy to blow off that behavior. But I, I really think that that behavior is induced in a person intentionally. Like that's, that's, that's the intended outcome. Mm-hmm. But there are certain tools that are trying to induce that behavior. And you are right that that is my feeling of it, that it's like I've been trained in these little loops and the training results in like shorter attention spans or less ability to focus. And then this is manifesting itself in all sorts of other areas that don't actually have anything to do with the source of the problem. So it's, it's, it was much more like my podcast listening habits and particularly the thing with the shower for me is like a like a real symptom but it's a symptom of something else and so that's that's really what i was just trying to say <laughs> it makes more sense to me if i had only said it at the time <laughs> i know cuz my main complaint was like the the algorithm and the podcast didn't yeah. go together but yeah. you were missing that middle part of explaining the bridge, which wasn't in your video, which you were saying, like, I didn't explain my point, but yeah. then you never explained it. Right, but I, ne- <laughs> but I never explained it again. But that's why, like, when I was listening back to me, I thought, that guy who was recording the podcast with you, he knew this connection that the guy who made the video didn't. He had articulated this thought by that time in his own head, but then he neglected to actually <laughs> communicate that part to you <laughs> right so it's like but this is this is why you know in in that in that conversation like it was very clear like i've been thinking this topic through and, and it's like it's it really feels like it's a developing thing and uh again it is interesting is super interesting to me that like after the last show tons of people that i know in my personal and professional life you know reached out and and were like Sort of like like you just said there, like, that they noticed habits in themselves that they just didn't really, they weren't mindful of before or expressed a similar idea. But there's there's something in this topic which seems to touch a lot of people in different ways. Like it doesn't express itself in everybody in the same way, which is part of what makes it so difficult to talk about. But I really find that if this topic resonates with someone, it resonates with them pretty strongly but it can be very hard to define the boundaries of what is and is not exactly what we're talking about here i 100 percent agree like i i think this ties into what i was talking about last time with like just thinking through some different stuff and like making some small changes Mm -hmm. that you know the more i think about what you're doing Whilst I have no desire to follow the path that you've chosen, because it's just not for me, right? Like the the complete removal, it's just not something I feel like I would be punishing myself mm. um, as opposed to getting a relief, which yeah, right. I think that's the difference between the two of us. Yeah. And then that would be dumb and pointless. Like, yeah, it's like the, that's there's no good in that. Right. Like I'm punishing myself and also making myself worse at my job. Right. Like I just don't <laughs> understand the benefit for me, but it has kind of just brought forward into my mind to think a little bit more consciously about what I'm doing in Mm -hmm. a day. And I don't know what that means yet. And I think that this is the start of me working out my theme for next year. Hmm. I think that I'm building towards something here. I don't know what it is yet. Um, I've seen some interesting characterizations in the Reddit of what I was talking about last time, right? Like people like throwing out some names and that's like, oh, okay, like if that becomes a thing, I don't want to spoil it. No spoilers. You can't do yearly themes until we all know this, right? Yearly themes come in January. Even though it seems like it's a great time to talk about it, but okay. <laughs> but we don't need to do that. Uh, I, right. do not, I did actually notice a lot of feedback in the Reddit of people, and this was like happening in between the time that we recorded and published, there were multiple threads in the Cortex subreddit about people thinking of their new themes. And I was mm. like, huh, this must be the time that like... It is the time. Mike. No, it's the time you start thinking. It's not the time you set it. We haven't set no, it yet. Okay. You think. Well, okay. It's like, oh, it is, I'm it thinking is, no, about it. Is, it is the time. The leaves are starting to change. Yeah. It's you, like you, it is the perfect you, yeah. time to start reflecting on your previous year. And starting to think about what you want the next one to be. Like, in all seriousness, it's like the perfect time for that. I think it's too soon 
to like just be like, all right, I'm thinking about it. I've said it, and I'm gonna go. Like that doesn't work for me. Like I want some time to like let it embed. Um, mm-hmm. And so like you know, I, I'm just in that phase right now, and I think that considering my usage of everything in my life a little bit more, not just the internet, like how much time I spend on video games, and just like just trying to take stock of it all a little bit. I think that's kind of where I am right now. Yeah, I'll mention another phrasing that I I have used since I started the time tracking, uh, and or I should say, since I started the time tracking full time, you know, when I wasn't just tracking the work hours. Mm-hmm. And what is an extremely important tag for me across some activities is intentional versus unintentional. And so, watching Netflix is it's a totally different experience whether it is intentional or unintentional like oh i'm sitting down to watch a thing is very different from i'm sitting on the couch and i i'm just bored and i want something to occupy me right like the second one is like this unintentionality like i'm just looking for whatever and there are a lot of activities that are that are like that where I have a, a marker for these two different things. Like am I am I playing video games intentionally? That's great. That's actually high quality time if I have sat down and decided that this is the thing that I want to do now. Or am I just unintentionally doing this thing? Like, oh, I just kind of blew the evening on the internet and I didn't mean to. Whereas like when shows went up and I would go on the Reddit, like that is tracked as intentional internet. Like I'm here, I'm looking at feedback, I'm replying to people, and then um, I'm out of here, right? And it's like, that's intentional internet versus like, oh, I just sat down on the couch and the iPad was next to me and then I put it on me and I just read the Reddit and oh, Netflix is also just on in the background and I'm not paying attention to Netflix and I'm not paying attention to Reddit either. It's like, oh... That's terrible. Like, it's a terrible way to spend a life. Anyway, I just mentioned that because I find that phrasing really useful. Because even though I am taking this rather dramatic break from the internet, in normal life, there are lots of activities where the intentionality matters. And I think it's really important to have a, like a war on unintentionality in your life. Like, don't do things unintentionally. Do them intentionally. Hello, Cortexans. Well, I'm back in the acoustically subpar glass cube. It's been a while since I've been here. It's quite different than those woods. Looking around, there's a couple things I think maybe could improve this office. I mean, I'm standing up in it right now and I can see all of my little cubicle farm neighbors in every direction. I'd rather not see them. And you know, I took some gorgeous photos while I was out hiking around. If only, if only there was some kind of way I could fix both of these problems. Well, today's sponsor has the answer. Fracture is the company that can take your favorite images and print them directly onto glass for display in your home or your glass cubicle. So I'm thinking while I'm in this glass cube, I can go back through and look at some of those photos of mountains and rivers that I took. And I'm gonna select a a few of them, upload them to Fracture, and they can turn it into a beautiful print and ship it to my office, where I can then put it on the wall and I can look at that beautiful photo instead of looking at the sad faces of all of my cubicle mates. Now you may be thinking, how on earth can you mount a glass picture to a glass wall? Well, fractures, as I'm always surprised when I get them, are super duper light. So mounting them anywhere isn't a problem. Now fractures are handmade in Gainesville, Florida from US sourced materials and their sleek frameless design goes with any decor. And it totally gets the CGP Grey seal of approval for looking sleek and cool. That frameless, just the image look, I love that. So whatever photos are important to you, think about them now. Head to fractureme.com slash 
Cortex. And there you can see just how easy it is to upload one of your photos to Fracture, have them print it, and send it to you. So when you go to FractureMe.com slash Cortex, that will get you 15% off your first order. And of course, let Fracture know that you heard about them from inside the glass cube. That's FractureMe.com slash Cortex. Go there right now to get 15% off your first order and to make some of the beautiful photos that you have present objects in your life. Thanks to Fracture for supporting the show and thanks to Fracture for ultimately improving the view in my glass cube. Great. I get feedback for shows, right? Like all the shows mm. that I do, people send in suggestions and they send in comments and stuff like that. It's great. I have never ever for any show I've ever done in the last eight years, received as much feedback as I did for suggestions on music. (laughs) And I know now this is going to be something that continues probably for the next five years. Yeah, yeah. But (laughs) I am not complaining because I have found some brilliant stuff from Cortex listeners. But Mm. there are hundreds of comments, hundreds of threads with more comments in them. Right. But by that pure amount, some names bubbled up a lot. Mm -hmm. So like that, just getting the pure amount has allowed me to surface a few specific artists that I really like. Okay, so do you have some lyric list suggestions for me? I do. I'm looking for music like this and I always find it very hard. So what have you distilled down for me here? Okay, so one is Tycho. Oh, I on heavy rotation. So when I when I try to find this music, there there's like uh an Apple an Apple radio. There's something that's like some radio station called Electronic Chill. Yeah, I've been yeah, a bunch of people have recommended those types of things to me too. Yeah, it's not very good, but occasionally it hits just right. And there's some Tycho song that I found which has just been on really heavy background loop. Yep. But I I never really thought to investigate farther. So okay, this sounds like a winner. So I've been listening to Tycho's album Awake a lot. Okay. And I've added all of their previous albums to my Apple Music. I haven't started listening to those yet. Mm-hmm. Time Cop 1983, an album called Night Drive. There is an instrumental version an and a version with lyrics. It is so good. It's just 80s electronic music uh-huh. is so good. So good. I love this album. Um, there's an entire genre of music called synthwave, mm-hmm. and I've been finding some compilations of this, and I'm trying to find what I like and don't like about it, so I'm still kind of like digging into that. I don't have any artists specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, Dead Mouse, uh, you know, D-E-A-D-M-A-U-5, the, right. the mouse guy. You know Dead Mouse, right? Sure, you would know him if you saw him. You... No, yeah, I, I, I remember... The DJ who wears the big mouse head, the big fun mouse I head. I remember a YouTube clip where he through a concert on a Minecraft server where at the end he there dumped everyone into lava. That is that is how I know Dead Mouse. <laughs> All right. Well, whatever it is, you've got some kind of <laughs> cultural touch point. Yeah. The most important cultural touch point, I'm sure. And I've been listening to an album called Where's the Drop quite mm-hmm. a lot. And also Explosions in the Sky is another band. And I've started listening to that today. I'm not 100% sure how mm-hmm. I feel about that yet. Um, What I have come to understand about myself is primarily the stuff that I seem to be drawn to is electronic music. Mm. I didn't really know that I liked electronic music as much as I do, but it turns out I really, really like it. There is an album that I've been listening to a bunch right now, which it it is full of lyrics, but it's so freaking good I can't stop listening to it. And and I I actually think you should try this one as well. It's a band called Jungle, who I really like, and they just released a new album called Forever, which is just excellent but like their music the way they the way they present it like the their lyrics are they're very melodic so it's easy to tune out Mm -hmm. like it's not very lyric focused so yeah these are the ones that i've added so far and have been listening to a bunch there's also an entire genre of music called lo-fi hip-hop which has been recommended to me about 70 billion times (laughs) i have yet to find like a definitive thing for this like right. I, I don't know where to look because i keep finding stuff that sounds very different so 
And also, people keep sending me Spotify playlists, which is no good for me. I appreciate that a lot, but I use Apple Music. <laughs> yeah. And there's kind of nothing I can really do about it. But yeah, well, like, can you, are you going to be able to put a bunch of Apple Music links in the show notes so that I can just load up this stuff? Hundred percent. Well? Yes. Well, you, you you bet. It's going to be in there. Loads Great. of loads of Apple Music links is what you're going to find in there. That's that's what I want. But also all the stuff that I've recommended, they're not like playlists so you can get them on any service but like people have been recommending like compilation playlists to me for lo-fi hip-hop which i can't do anything with and again right. very helpful because there's been some stuff where like i've picked out some artists and i've tried them out but they just haven't been for me for whatever reason because really i think we were all going together on a journey to understand what type of music does mike want to listen to because i didn't mm-hmm. know and lo-fi hip-hop and electronic are very different in style now they perform the same task for lots of people like good background music like again Mm -hmm. like a lot of people have suggested try music that is not in your language and i've been thinking about like k-pop and j-pop so i would love some recommendations there as well Uh, because that's a good thought right it's like there can be lyrics but if i can't understand them then it doesn't matter you know so the only thing i've ever listened to that sort of works like that is Sigur Ross. Be, that's like I've, I've seen uh, Sigur Ross mentioned a lot, a lot too. To I have me. a I have a bunch of stuff from them mm-hmm. uh, that I quite like, but it, it never it never occurred to me uh, because you know everybody knows I I sure do like the like the worst of the worst top forty pop songs. Like boy, yep. as as right in like the core of of my musical preferences. Uh, it's like has Britney Spears released a new song? Great, <laughs> like that's gonna be on loop for a while. But it never occurred to me to try to like find that stuff in another language. Like maybe that would work even better, because uh, it's kind of it's like there's I can I can have that such a feeling in my head like there's a particular sound from some pop music that's like yes that is exactly what I just want on loop mm-hmm. that works for work, and I'd be curious to see if I could find that in another language. So yeah, I'd be well I'll be curious to let you filter through yeah. uh, all the recommendations. Uh, you, you would find that sort of stuff in K-pop for sure. I mean, except <laughs> other language stuff I would like to try, but my brain latches on. Even I found in the past, like some songs in Japanese and stuff that I've listened to, my brain just tries to latch on and I try to sing them. Right. You, you know what I mean? Like, so like I don't know if it what what would happen with that, but. Anytime I've ever heard any type of like K-pop or J-pop, it does excite me. Like the music is really fun. So mm-hmm. again, I would love more recommendations. I feel like I'm just setting myself up to get this forever. But I will also say this is the most useful feedback I've ever received <laughs> from a show because I it is it's like helping me change something. I am listening to music all the time now. All the mm-hmm. time there is music on when I'm at home. And I'm enjoying that a lot. I'm very excited about it. So I appreciate the feedback. I'm interested to go through this stuff because I always want background noise on. Mm-hmm. I, like I tend, I tend, I've always tended to favor like thunder sounds or rain or just nature sounds. But I, I do have this problem that they make my wife very sleepy. Th- these sounds, so I always have to turn oh, yeah. them off because well, they're when meant for she comes back. <laughs> right, like that's what people <laughs> use them for. I mean, I guess so. I guess that makes sense, you know. But like, if if I leave my thunder sounds on, she'll be asleep within twenty minutes. Like, she just can't mm-hmm. stay awake. So I have to, you know, I was like, oh well, I can't, I can't leave this on. But I've, I have been trying. The reason I've been using that Apple Radio thing is I've been trying to build together a list of songs that's like this one Tycho song that I found, where I can just have it on in the background and it won't put her to sleep. But it also means I'm not in a totally silent room. I don't under. I, this is like one of those things where I feel like I can't understand your brain. If you wanted songs like that one, why didn't you just check out an album or two of his? I can tell you why because I've I've had a bunch of experiences where I find a song that I like and then I go to look at the artist and it's a weird one off for some reason, like a one hit wonder type deal. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So I I think that's just why I I I just. I hadn't. It hadn't occurred to me to go look because I've been on a long string of, oh, I like this one song and I like nothing else that you've done. One of the key ones for me. You've ever seen the movie Drive? No. It's an incredible movie. Drive is Ryan Gosling. You should watch the movie. It's a very good movie. There's okay. a song in that movie called Night Call by a band called Kapinski. I think it's mm-hmm. Kapinski. And it's I love that song so much. And it's like electronica and stuff, and it's got a really nice vocal in it. And that, like, Kapinski's album 
is kind of like it, but it's not the it's not as good, right? right? Or it's like uh, it's Kavinsky, sorry, not Kapinski, Kavinsky. Like it's from their album Outrun, which is all like focused on like it's electronica with an eighties flair, but it's just not as good as Nightcall, right? Like Nightcall stands out so strongly. Mm-hmm. That it's just like, oh man, I thought I'd found like the perfect band. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck filtering through all those suggestions, Mike. They're going to be coming from now until forever. The day you die. <laughs> but this is useful, though. It's not like you know I said something wrong one time and you hear about it forever. Like this is like people adding value to me. I did want to say like why I don't use Spotify because I used to use Spotify. The reason I use Apple Music is because the best device in my house for music is my HomePod. And so for the HomePod, you should use Apple Music because mm-hmm. it's the only thing that's supported. Like, cause we used to use Spotify and used to listen to it on the Echo, but the Echo kind of sucks, right? Like the Echo we have, it just doesn't sound very good. But the HomePod sounds incredible. So I'm using Apple Music primarily now because that's where I listen to the music. So and I love the HomePod. The audio on that thing is incredible. Do you have one? Oh, man. When you play a stereo, a recorded stereo thunderstorm, on a pair of home pods. You got a pair? I've been thinking about getting a second one. You need an umbrella to listen to that. Because I've heard <laughs> I've heard in a stereo pair at, at Jason Snell's house and it sounded incredible. And at the time I was like, Oh, I don't listen to music that much. But now I do, so maybe I need a second one. Yeah, well the home pod is vital once you start using a lot of shortcuts. <laughs> Siri and I we're we're much mm. more friendly. Now, now the shortcuts is around, which means home pods. They're they're sprouting up everywhere. Cortexmerch.com. Cortexmerch.com. Thank you to everybody who's bought some of our merch from our most recent merch drop. Uh, we do still have some limited edition That's items that drop. are only available for a week more. So don't miss out on these. You want to go to cortexmerch.com, find out. There have been a bunch of people, Gray, who are getting their pins arriving already, and they've been sending me pictures. Ooh. Mine are like days away from getting here, and I'm so freaking excited because those pins look so good. So good. I've got pins on the way. I don't know when they're coming, but I do have pins coming. Everybody loves the pins. Oh, I figure yeah. i got to get in on this pin action. Yeah, it's they they look excellent. I can't wait. And uh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff going on, so you got to go check it out. Because it's not going to be around forever. Cortexmerch.com. Go check out some of the limited edition stuff. They have a whole cornucopia of items for you. Cortexmerch.com. Cortexmerch.com. Oh, my. There's a lot of explosions when it comes to merch. I don't know. I was trying to think about, like, it's, 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 it's a drop. Like, a bomb is dropping, but the sound right, came right. out all wrong. I got to yeah. work on that. We yeah, got to workshop work that. that. Did you get a new iPhone? Did I get a new iPhone? Yeah. I did get a new iPhone, Mike. Okay. Did you get a new iPhone? I got a new iPhone. So we both have new iPhones. Did you get a 10s Max? I've got a 10s Max. All right. It's right in front of me. It's huge. All right, let me ask you about that, right? Like you say, it's huge. Do you feel like it's too big? Like, how do you feel? Because I feel that, like, this is a big phone. I know it's a bigger phone, like in screen than I've ever used before. But it's not... I don't find it unwieldy. It's interesting. It's interesting using this phone. I'll, t- I'll tell you what my mind keeps going to. Mm-hmm. It's the TV show Westworld. Okay. I don't know if you've watched Westworld or not. I haven't, I haven't seen it. No. If you just do a quick Google for Westworld phones... Okay. They do... They have a very like whoever is the uh, the guy who has does like the design for that show, like the tech design. That team, they're great. They use these super duper big phones in Westworld. Oh but right, okay. They're all screen. Yeah, like the, you know they they expand out, but in their default version, they're all screen. That look nice. And I keep thinking about those phones because. My initial impression is is that what I hoped would be the case is the case, that because the entire front of the phone is display, it really does change the feeling of it. It just feels like the whole thing is so much more useful. I don't feel like they're these big, dumb dead zones at the top and the bottom that you can't do anything with. Mm-hmm. 
So it does feel very big to me, but it feels appropriately and usefully big. So my my initial reaction is this is a this is a big phone, but I love it. I really yeah, love you it do. so far. <laughs> nice club. <laughs> I mean, I still have a week before I have to make the final decision about am I returning it or not. Yep. It is very big in the pocket, which we can come to in a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I really like it. I like it a lot. I think this, the all screen on the front is super duper nice. I mean, I, I yeah. presume as the founding member of the Giant Phone Club. Yeah. The, no longer the Plus Club. Max The Club, club Max. You got to call it Club Max, Max, I think. Club Max. Uh-huh. I assume you love it as well. Oh, I love it. Like, <laughs> there was a phrase that I that came to mind kind of after about 10 minutes. I'm not of using this phone. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm home again. Like, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it felt just so right. Like, right. Because there was always this thing about the 10 of like, I knew it was a smaller phone. Like, it was always smaller. And like, I liked it because I loved the design, but it was always smaller and it wasn't right. too small but it was smaller and there were just a lot of things that i would notice where it's like oh this feels different and it you know it's like i can hold it in one hand it's like okay i can do that but like comfortably and like easily which is nice but like it feels weird because it's not what i've been used to and it took 10 minutes for the 10 to feel like a baby's phone mm, like i yeah. picked it up like i'm doing the transfer process i'm like what is this tiny phone <laughs> Uh, so yeah i i love it i really love it like it it definitely doesn't have as many kind of improvements that the six plus did to the six right Mm -hmm. like where like you'd look at it and be like okay so you get all these extra cameras and extra battery and there's way more space on screen and that sort of stuff like the 10 and the 10s are way closer together but even the small gains that it gives me in battery life, in being able to see like a couple more emails on a screen or whatever. It's what I want. I always want the big one. I always want that because I just, any more space I can get on my pocket computer, I want it. Yeah, I I will just say for the listeners, every once in a while when I see Mike's phone in person, I'm always shocked at how, how small you crank down the font very small on your like, phone like you showed yeah. me la- last time we were in person i think i saw you using twitter on on your phone or it was something like that and i think you had two dozen tweets visible on the screen at once because you had you had done like the reverse accessibility option to make the font just micro mm-hmm. like you are a man who wants content on his phone and just, lots of it <laughs> if i'm gonna get it i want as much as i can get right like it just it that was always just made sense to me and I don't know why. It just makes me laugh because I'm the exact reverse here where I want big screens because I want the text to be enormous, right? Yeah. Whereas like, I've, I've always like, oh, great. It's a bigger screen. I can crank it up. It makes so <laughs> much sense. It's right. You have, you have more space. It, you can more comfortably have a bigger text size and yeah. not lose a lot. But I, I think this is a holdover from when I ran a business from my phone, right? Like, mm. And that it was just like, if you can get information on these things, I want all of the information. So, yeah, I, I mean, I remember listening to you talk about that. I think back in the, back in the, pre cortex days maybe i don't know i can't i can't quite think of the timeline but yeah. i remember that was a big deal for you that, like you were running the business off of the plus phone when mm-hmm. it came out and yeah so that like that does make sense that if you are doing that you want all the content you can possibly get on the phone but it is big i did pay a horrific amount for apple care apple care is so expensive now look you, you got to increase that average selling price somehow, i know Mike. and, I and know, the way you increase it is by making apple care two dollars more expensive every year <laughs> but and i put it in a case oh what color did you get by the way oh space gray of course no oh, the, the chocolate that's... color chocolate color don't like it it's, it's not chocolate don't like that's, it it's not gray no. enough it's like this weird brownie color it's very strange i got gold you must have, you, i swear to god you have a different phone than i do because mine is is like well yeah batman black i do have a different phone i have beautiful gold is what i have. the gold does look good i'm uh i won't i won't uh 
disparage you for the gold. I think it looks good. Some some years oh, I like their golds better. They're more or less gold, but the, the gold on the phone looks pretty good. So I've just done that thing where I've taken it out of the case. And I, oh God, I love I love these the way these phones feel without cases on them. But I just can't trust myself. I have to have a case. So I went with a the blue, a, like a dark blue case because I think it looks good with the little gold pieces that you can see. But I've, I just, as much as I don't want to, I can't trust myself. Okay, so let, let's let's talk about cases and pockets and many other things. We know you love pockets. Any any excuse to talk Mike. about a pocket? God damn it, Mike! No, I'm not. It's not about the pockets. It's about the holding of things. Oh. Okay. I don't understand why I seem to be the odd man out here and everybody else is some kind of war on pockets and convenience. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, like, I'm, just, I'm just trying to make things easy. And pockets is one way to make things easy. But this phone, it is pretty big in the pocket. Like it's, it's a yep. little bit uncomfortably big. And that for me is, is the trade-off. It's like, boy, I like this screen. Boy, I don't like feeling a bunch of things in my pockets. I don't, I don't, I don't want that. So, and when you put the case on it, it get like the, the, I just have the default Apple case. Boy, does it make a significant difference. And I swear just the, the larger physical size changes the whole interaction between like the friction in your pocket Mm -hmm. and the phone. Like I find it much harder with the exact same case to get the plus phone in and out of my pocket than I do with the, with the X like that. It's like, oh, just a little bit bigger. The friction uh, increases with the square of the size of the surface. Like, that's the way it feels. So I'm like, I don't really want a case on this thing. I don't know. Like, I'm I'm going back and forth. I have to say, you, a while back, recommended that I try pop sockets Ah, on phones. Yeah, yeah. So do you want to explain to the people what a pop socket is? You have seen these in the world. They are these little discs that sit on the back of people's phones, typically people that have larger phones. And you can pull the disc away from the phone. It's like stuck on the back of this adhesive. And there's this like rubber that's left behind in an almost like a funnel shape, like a cone shape. And what that does is it means you can put the pop socket in between your fingers when it is extended. And it allows you to be able to hold onto the phone without the requirement of gripping the entire thing all the way around. So it helps for either A, people who have smaller hands, B, people who have phones that are too big for their hands, which is pretty much everyone at this point. Yeah. Uh, and so the, I have used one of these things for a while and I continue to use it. I really, really like it. It just means that I'm able to adjust my grip. Sometimes I will hold my phone regularly, but sometimes I don't want to. Sometimes I want to either just like hold it and put the pop socket in between my fingers or I like grip the whole pop socket in like a in my fist and kind mm. of hold it like that and just look at my phone or i can rest my phone in between like my pointer finger and my thumb I can just rest it there it allows for me to be able to adjust my grip which anyone that's listened to this show for long enough knows that me and you really like to adjust the way that we do things with our hands yep, yep. um and i've found that since i started using the pop socket it's just become way easier for me to be able to handle my phone all the time when we meet up in person, I would always see you playing around with the pop oh, so, socket. Oh, so a great fidget toy. It. Yeah, exactly. Great like, it's fun toy. to fidget with. It makes a very satisfying pop sound as you extend it or compress it. You know, it's, it's it's a really interesting thing. And I, I was always curious when I saw you using it. And at some point, uh, I don't know, in the last six months, I, I caved and I decided to get one for my iPhone X. And I was like, I put it on the phone and I was like, I try it. And oh, it's kind of interesting. Hmm. I don't, and I, w- I would say to you, like, oh, how do you use it? I don't, like, I was going just back and forth with this thing, and I was like, eh, I couldn't really quite decide, and so I, I put it in a drawer. And then when the the Tennis Max came, I stuck it on the back, and I thought, oh, oh, this makes a pretty big difference to have this pop socket on here. I have noticed it make a much, much bigger difference to me on the Max than on the regular 10. Yeah. I'm, I'm using it even more. So let me tell you this arc that happened. So I okay. put the pop socket on the back of the phone. Now, no case on the phone, just the pop socket. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is great. So I'm using it for a week. And as the course of the week goes on, I think, oh, yeah, it's pretty good. But I think I like it maybe less than I did at the start. I don't know. I'm not really paying attention. But just so happens in this past week that I had 
family visiting. And just like with you, when I saw you using the pop socket, everybody wanted to know, hey, what's that thing on your phone? And so, of course, people wanted to try it on their phone. I was taking it on and off and sticking it on other people's phones, and they were trying it out. And it's like, oh, this is interesting. So, of course, what happened is the glue on my pop socket <laughs> uh, became not as strong. Yeah, you can't just keep doing that. Well, it, well, you know, now I know. I didn't know then. <laughs> and so I eventually went to re-affix it onto my Tennis Max and... It sadly would not stick. And that is the moment I realized, oh, this accessory became a 100% vital accessory for this phone. When I, like, when I thought, I, I, like, oh, I'm not sure how much I like it, what actually had occurred is this had just been completely incorporated into the way you use the device, so you're not thinking about it as much. But right now, I don't have a pop socket on my phone because the glue became too weak. So I have express ordered three, right? So I have replacements available and it's like on the way. It's like, I need this thing immediately because it's, it, I was really surprised, but with the big phone, it's so much more comfortable to hold it on the back with one, because you're like, you're going to need two hands anyway. So to hold it on the back with the pop socket and then use the front, like you don't have to have this death grip around the edges of your phone when you're holding it. So it's like... I like the bigger phone, but I think the pop socket is totally a necessary part of it. Like, I couldn't believe how much of a difference it made on the big phone. But this is where, like, but now, now, Mike, we start to descend into this world. This, like, this frustrating, <laughs> this frustrating world. You're right. Over there. <laughs> no, I'm genuinely not. Okay. Because it's, the, it's this frustrating world. Oh. You can I know never where this is get... Going everything that you want in life yeah, yeah and all i want is everything to go my way mm -hmm. but you can't get everything to go your way no so what is not going my way mike you can't charge it okay now with wireless charging if if when you take the phone out of your pocket if you have the very forgiving mophie charger and if the ambient temperature in your room is what? low enough so that the pop socket hasn't slightly expanded due to the heat. Wow, you've really gone through And you, this. look, I've got an office. I keep it very cold in here. And you place the phone exactly in the center of the wireless charger. It will wirelessly charge at, I think, about half a watt. That's like, mm. it, it will charge... The battery chart is hilarious uh, because it goes up extremely slowly. You can, in theory, get it to work, but now you have given up all of the advantages of wireless charging, which is you don't have to think about it. You just place it on the thing and it just charges. And it's like, boy, I really love the wireless charging. It To me, the wireless charging is like the go-to example of how removing what seems like a trivial amount of friction from a process actually makes a huge difference. So it's like, oh, I've got to choose between the pop socket and the wireless charging, and I, I don't like this at all. It's, it's very frustrating. But then, okay, this, this starts a little bit of a cascade. Because then I think, well, if I can't have the wireless charging anyway, I can put a case back on the phone. Now, I don't want a case on the phone, except having a case has a huge advantage, which is my glass cube office has one of those little security credit card things that you need to tap on a bunch of doors. Oh, okay. It's the dumbest office setup in the world, because if I'm in my glass cube and I want to go to the cafeteria and get a coffee. I think I need to tap like four or five security doors to get to the get there. It's so dumb. It provides it's like the building said, "Hey, how can we have all of the all of the hassle of security with none of the actual security?" So but nonetheless, I need to carry this little card with me. And it doesn't like it doesn't work very well in my wallet because all of the other RFID cards block it so i put a little rfid blocker behind just that one like i've done i've done all these crazy things but if i can put it in the case of the phone oh this is suddenly a very big advantage but then it's like do i want a pop socket and the case and a 
card behind the phone as well? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I feel extraordinarily uncertain about what's going to happen with like the case setup. I also have like a little bumper case that's on the way to try out. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm about to descend into a madness of what is the combination of pop sockets and cases. Bumper case and pop socket would be interesting. So I found one that looks pretty good, which is from Rhino Shield or Rhino Case, something like that. Ugh, they okay. No, you don't like I, it. I've hated their stuff in the past. I haven't looked at the most recent one. They are the only one that I could find that seemed to make what was a cl- like the classic bumper case that Apple had for the four. It looks like it's the closest for that for the Max, but I don't know. I'm t- like I don't. I like having extra grip around the side of the phone. But then this brings us to the final complication where I'm trying to weigh these trade-offs. The trade-off is, it's big in the pocket. But, fortunately, before I left the internet, last time we had a discussion about pockets, our very helpful audience introduced me to a whole world of tactical jeans. So, jeans that are designed for discrete carry of stuff. Mm -hmm. And... I saved all of those links in a little document, and then I sent out emails to a bunch of companies asking exactly what their pocket size was, trying to narrow down like side pockets and if they would fit the phone. So I've ordered a few other pair of jeans that are on their way to me right now to try to be side pockets to hold the phone. Oh, I remember what I didn't like about Rhino Shield. What? The bumper cases go all the way around, so you couldn't easily activate the home gesture swiping. Because hmm. the Apple cases stop at the bottom, right? Right. Right. The the bumper cases don't. And and I had I bought the Rhino Shield for the ten, and I couldn't properly activate the uh the the home button swiping stuff. Hmm. So that will be worth checking out. I'd be tr- intrigued to know if they've made any kind of difference on that. Looking at the design, doesn't look like they have. Um, so I'm keen to see what your experience ends up being. I might be able to cut it down. You, know, you can always try to modify these things. Sure, that won't affect the structural integrity of the case if you just start cutting chunks out of it. I, I, I don't. I don't think it will. Okay. But yeah, so it's like there's this whole. I feel like I'm. I'm in this uncertain matrix of what are all of the options going to be. Like the pop socket and the case and the pants. They all depend on each other. And I just, I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen. And I do feel like you said at the beginning of this conversation, which is just the normal iPhone with nothing else on it is also just so nice. Mm -hmm. Like it's such a pleasing design. So I don't know. I feel, I feel great uncertainty and I don't like, I don't know what's going to happen with all these cases and designs. I just look, all I want is everything. I want a pop socket and I want no case. And I also want to be able to put a card on the back of the phone or a hotel card on the back of the phone and I also want to use wireless charging. Would that card not then interfere with your ability to use Apple Pay? Uh, It doesn't. The card doesn't interfere with the ability to use Apple Pay. Uh, But the wireless charging will totally fry the card. (laughs) 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 Just FYI for anybody else who wants to put the card at the back of the phone in between the case, you're going to fry that card. I probably shouldn't say this because this is going to sound crazy, but I went I went so far as to so I found some x-rays of the phone to see where the Qi charger is and then I took the card and I melted it down with acetone to take out just the chip and the little oh antenna. My God, really? And I I threaded the antenna as tightly as I could around where the camera casing is with the little chip on the side. Whoa. And I thought, this is, with, this is with the 10 when I was trying to get, because I hate cards in my wallet, Mike. Like, I don't want them. I want to get okay. rid of the stupid wallet. I threaded it around. I was like, it worked, but only for a few days. And I think it was the same problem, that it was still too close to the wireless charger that it was getting fried. How far away are you from, like, embedding this into your fingertip? <laughs> I mean... If I could do it, I would. Like, if I just like, I will do anything to not have to carry wow. these things. So, I've, I've anyway. This is this is all to say. It's like there are these different options, and I just I don't know where I'm going to settle with this. But I really want to make this bigger phone work because I I really do I really do like it. 
Could you find a way to try and embed that coil into a watch band? That's an interesting idea. That's an interesting idea. I might have to report back later on that. Yeah, just try that. Then someone might make an Apple Watch band that you could put something inside anyway. But like, you might be able to try and find a way to get it in a watch band. Hmm. Um. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna mull on that. I'm gonna mull on that. This episode of Cortex is brought to you by Amazon Prime Video Channels. Prime Video Channels is yet another wonderful perk available to Amazon Prime customers. I'm sure you've heard of Amazon Prime. It's what can get you that super fast shipping. But you can also get Prime Video and a bunch of other wonderful entertainment instantly through Prime Video channels. Whatever you're into, you can create a TV lineup that you're going to love, and you can choose from over a 100 premium and specialty channels like HBO to get yourself the latest seasons of Ballers and Insecure, and of course, Game of Thrones, CBS All Access to watch NFL and SEC football, Star Trek Discovery, NCIS, the Big Bang Theory, and so many more. What about Showtime, Stars, the list goes on and on. And you can start any of these with a seven-day free trial for any of the channels that you want to try. After you've started a channel subscription, you can watch your movies and shows whenever and wherever you want. Just open the Prime Video app on any of your devices and look for your channels and they'll be right there. Now, being here in the UK, what I love about Prime Video channels is I can get stuff like ITV without having advertisements, so you can pay for it, you get no advertisements. And also, I really love having everything all within the Amazon app, super easy to use, and then all of my content is in that one place. But you can get access to so many, whether you're here, whether in the US, it doesn't matter. There's so many channels and great content available to you. Who doesn't love curling up on the sofa and binge-watching something like Game of Thrones? Sometimes after a long day at work, it's just what you need. And having access to so many more shows means that you can really make the most of your peaceful downtime. Only pay for the channels you want with Prime Video Channels. Start your free trial of over 100 channels today by visiting tryprimechannels.com slash cortex. That's tryprimechannels.com slash cortex to get yourself a free trial of over 100 channels. Just go there and take a look at it. I guarantee there's going to be something that you'll want to sign up for. Our thanks to Amazon Prime Video Channels for their support of this show and all of Relay FM. Did you get a new Apple Watch too? Because you seemed way more excited about the watch than the phone last episode. Oh yeah, for sure. The watch is, was the much more interesting product from the announcement. I'm, I'm really pleased with the phone, but I was super interested in the watch. That camera though. <laughs> My God, it's so good. <laughs> they undersold that camera a lot so I've, bad I've, it's like they didn't yeah. even bother like it's so good between us recording that episode and then the episode actually going up a bunch of reviews came out which talked about how like oh this camera's super amazing and i just kept thinking about how i said nothing burger in the show and i was like oh no yeah, <laughs> like, it, well but that was they, they really did not position <laughs> they just didn't position it well enough, I don't think. And I'm not 100% sure why. I'm always happy for camera improvements. Mm-hmm. So that makes me feel a lot better, like doubly better about upgrading. Uh, like bigger size, better camera. <laughs> but yeah, the watch. I have had the new watch for less than 24 hours. Oh, but you have got one. That's great. Yeah. So I was able to get one yesterday. I'm wearing it on my wrist at this very moment. Which one did you get? Uh, I got the big one. 44 millimeters, black, stainless steel. That's my okay. watch. Okay. And I like the big iPhone screen. I totally love, love, love the bigger watch screen. This made sense because this was what you you, know, yeah. you said as much on the last episode. Like, I'm going to love this because I like big watches. It just seemed like inevitable. Like there, there was no way I wasn't going to like it. Right. And unlike the phone, I don't have to shove the watch in my pocket. Right. There's there's no pocket conundrum here. So this is this is no problem. Mm-hmm. I have to say, like, just just like getting text messages and alerts and timers and things on the watch in the last 24 hours. The big screen. It's so nice. Like it's the. I even feel like with timers, I don't have to think about hitting the button. Like I don't have to care about positioning my finger. It's like, boom, I can just That's I can just hit point. the button. Yeah, because right? it was always this, like, I feel like I need a chiseled point of a finger to hit some of this stuff reliably. The the one the one to me that's the clearest example of it is a timer where you had the two buttons, which is like stop and restart, and they're next mm-hmm. to each other. And 
is like, oh, this is just a much more comfortable gesture. Plus, they've pushed the buttons down and into the corners. They've kind of used like the rounded edges of the phone. So like the buttons are big and there's enough space on either side of them. And like when I get a, a Slack message alert through this watch, it's like, oh, look at all this text I could see. It's amazing. So, of course, because I'm me and not you, I've already thought like, oh, I got to go in those settings and increase the text size, right, to, get, like, to make it bigger. Just um, removing all of the benefit. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Like I feel you go halfway, right? I'll take mm-hmm. I'll take like half the size back and lose half of these extra <laughs> extra words. I'm not Mike going in like cranking the text all the way down. How small can I make this now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but man. The the bigger screen, it's just it's just great. I could do even bigger still, but this to me is like ah, I don't feel like it's a little small. Like I always love the Apple Watch, but I always felt like man, I could I could use a bigger screen. I could do bigger, and now they did bigger. I'm I'm super duper happy with it. Now, if I remember correctly, Adina was going to get a watch, and you mm-hmm. were going to play with it was that mm-hmm. was that the plan have you have you gotten your hands on a watch yeah there's a there's a there's like an, uh, an arc to this okay Tell so me. it began with me picking up my iphone like morning of right so i ordered the iphone and adina's 40 millimeter watch and i went to pick them up but on that day they have everything out so i went and tried on the 44 gold stainless steel mm-hmm. and immediately fell in love with it with the band with the milanese band or with something else it, actually, they didn't have the Milanese. They just had like a selection of sport bands. Um, mm-hmm. they, they didn't have the gold Milanese as a thing that you could try on, but I looked at it. I could see it, right? They had it in the case, but I couldn't try it on. So I just tried on the, the gold watch with like another band, like a couple of different bands. I changed them out. That thing is beautiful. I think it is absolutely stunning. It is the first time I have genuinely liked the look of an Apple Watch. Hmm. Like prior to this, it's kind of just been like, let me pick the one I like the look of the most, but it's always been a bit of an ugly duckling. Right. But this one, it's like everything about it, like it being thinner, the gold steel, I really love. It's the first time I've ever liked a stainless steel watch as well. I, I don't I don't like the original kind of the, the, the silvery stainless steel one, and it just never really spoke to me. I always preferred the aluminum ones. But it being in like gold as a color was really nice, and just the finish of it was nice. The screen going all the way to the edges just looks so much better. Um, yep. everything about it i loved everything about it and was like well they had none in stock on that day uh so i didn't get one but i was like i'm gonna get one of these things like i'm gonna get one i love it oh you mean you're gonna get one for yourself this was my feeling at that moment okay wait you say was though this was my feeling All right. at that moment all right this is a real roller coaster here yeah i bought Adina's watch <laughs> took it home and i wore it for 12 hours right like mm-hmm. set it all up wore it and found myself hating it. I hated it. Okay, why? This was something that was not the case before, but I hated getting notifications on my wrist. Right, because you have now gone... I mean, how long has it been since you since wore the Apple May? Watch? I haven't... Right. Since May. I mean, I've put them on... I put it on, like, a day here or there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, but, but, like, it's been, it's been since May. Mm-hmm. And... I never stopped wearing it because I disliked it. Like, that was never the thing. It was mm-hmm. that I found this other watch I liked more. Like, yeah. it wasn't that I had a problem with the Apple Watch. I always loved the Apple Watch. I loved the notifications, right? But I noticed it most where um, I was streaming a video game, right? So I was playing a video game, streaming a game. And I'm playing, and while I'm playing, my, r- my wrist is just going buzz, buzz, buzz. And I'm like, I can't do anything with this right now. Right, mm-hmm. like I'm doing something, and now the watch is like tr- vying for my attention. Mm-hmm. Where my iPhone, I just put it down, and it can mm. be buzzing and going crazy, but like it doesn't interrupt me unless I see it. Where like the watch, I don't have to be looking at this thing, and it's trying to get my attention when I'm busy. Right, and I think it's just in the time that I've not used it, I've developed new habits, and. My new habits are that I don't want to be interrupted when I don't want to be interrupted. And well, I can understand that very well, Mike. Exactly. And the Apple Watch inherently will do that. Like I can put it in do not disturb, right? But then like what's the point? So basically the kind of conclusion that I've come to is I don't want an Apple Watch anymore. Mm-hmm. For the foreseeable future, I have no interest in one because 
since I've stopped wearing it, nothing bad has happened. Mm-hmm. Right? All of my fears, nothing happened. Everything's fine. Because when I need to be available, I have my phone on me. And what I also like is I can put my phone down and just like walk away. And I'm like away from it all. Right? Mm-hmm. And it's unintentionally away. But I've noticed just... I think that a lot of this stuff, right? So like a lot of my like yoga and the music like it's all coming from this i think this new place of me being like a little bit more chill and i Mm -hmm. think part of that is i'm not so connected to everything anymore Mm. right like a message coming in that is not important for now it's just dealt with later or any message really but like messages that are not important they're just getting dealt with and they're getting dealt with on the apple watch i was immediately aware of them all the time Mm -hmm. so i think that there's just like a change in my mood which has come from me not wearing this thing every day so if i was going to wear an apple watch now i would significantly pare down the notifications for it right Mm -hmm. so now i'm just like well why am i even bothering i'm just going to buy the watch i want which is not an apple watch it's a right beautiful something else right which is super thin and you know what else drove me crazy couldn't see the time when i wanted to Mm. see it i noticed it like the first time i raised my wrist to look at the time and it took like however many milliseconds it took but it was too slow like for the screen to come on it's like my instinct now is to just see it i see i just looked right like i can give it a quick glance like i can get the time from my watch quicker and put my wrist down again then yeah. the watch, then the Apple Watch can show me the time in the first place. That is a big behavior change. That if you go to the Apple Watch, you have to learn. Uh, you're on your computer and you are just typing away, and you can look down at your real watch and just see the time without having to trigger it, without having to do a little gesture. And that does take a lot of getting mm-hmm. used to. And if you've gone back to a like a nice real mechanical watch. That is a frustration if you are wearing the Apple Watch and like I can't I can't just look at it. I have to do this little gesture to trigger it to yep. show me what the time is. And that drove me crazy. But like yeah. so there are those things like they're the reasons I don't want to wear one anymore. But I did find two new things. Mm. Which is why I might want to wear one. One was I'm now doing a form of exercise every single day mm-hmm. and it's not being tracked properly. Because I'm not going and putting my Apple Watch on. Turn my Apple Watch on. Like, I'm not going to do all of that. Because I'm not yeah, going to... Yeah, no, that's crazy. It's like, whatever. I'm not going to do that, like, just for a 25 or 30 minutes every day. It's it's too much hassle. But if I was wearing one all the time... Because I did a yoga workout with the watch on. And it was great. Because I got an accurate reading of how the workout went. Right? Like, I got all of that information from the sensors that it has. Because the, the yoga app that I use logs things to Apple Health. Well, actually, so here's the thing. It can log things to Apple Health but not on the iPad because health isn't on the iPad and I watch right. the videos on the iPad, so it can't log them. So I've set up a shortcut that logs a 30-minute activity to the health app every day, but it's almost pointless because it's, there's no usable information in it because it's just yeah. like you were exercising. Yeah. Where, it's just you know, it's a binary track. Like you exactly. did this thing. You might as well be keeping track of it in, in like like a like a habit tracking or streaks kind of app. Yeah. Like that's, it's yeah. Like, there's nothing to it, right? But like that shortcut also puts do not disturb on. Like it I, you know, it does a couple of things, like for 30 minutes, right? So like my phone won't buzz and you know, it's like a little shortcut mm. that I built for that. And also like the, the the yoga app, it tells you how many calories you burned, right? But that's just how many it assumes. It's wildly different to what the Apple Watch was telling me. Because the app knows nothing about me, right? right? But the watch knows how I'm breathing and it knows how my heart rate is. So it's able to more accurately guess the calories that I'm burning. So it was great for that. And also, I'm using Siri way more now um, for music and for shortcuts and all that kind of stuff. And I really like the raised to speak in the new watches. So all you do is, I think this is on the Series 3 as well, you just raise it right to your mouth and just start speaking without saying the trigger word. You know, the hey something trigger word. Hey Siri. Exactly. Uh, I didn't want to say oh, it purely sure. because my phone would go off. I wasn't doing it for anyone else's help but my own. It's like I don't want my phone to go off right now. But that, So that was really good because the HomePod will take every request, right? Mm-hmm. If it's in your home, it is scary. I like whispered into my phone in the bedroom yesterday and the HomePod went off. I was like, oh, God. Uh, so, <laughs> and sometimes I don't want that. Can I just say what's crazy about the HomePod is how... 
So again, like with family visiting, I'm doing a bunch of tutorials about like, here, here's how to use thing. And I was trying to do a Siri tutorial on the shortcuts. And so I'm showing this person how to do Siri triggers with the shortcuts. Now, they're not in my, like they're not registered in my house. It's a totally different iCloud account, right? They have nothing to do with this. But what, what I thought was kind of crazy is when they when you say the trigger word, I could see, oh, this iPad that I'm trying to demo on that doesn't belong to this household at all starts Siri starts to wake up, but then the home pods get it. Like they take over and then Siri shuts down on the iPad. It's like, this is crazy. Siri must have some kind of ad hoc network in yes, the house where every a, device is, is seeing yeah. who's ca- but it like it's i don't know if it's great or if it's not great that even across everybody's device it's still doing this but so the, the funny thing was is we had to go into another room in the house and like close the door and sort of whisper, <laughs> whisper. so that siri couldn't hear us it's like we're hiding from Siri in this room. <laughs> HomePod by far hears you better than any other of these digital assistant products. Like it is incredible. But the problem is it doesn't always understand you. It hears you, it doesn't always <laughs> understand you. So that still frustrates me. It's like Apple's ability to create this hardware is almost unparalleled, but Siri, the software, is still not good enough. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, that I can give it the same command twice. One time it doesn't understand, the second time it understands. It's like, well, yeah. I don't. Also, I'm trying to use Siri more, and it drives me crazy. Like, I've got it set up with some home actions, right, to, like, turn lights off mm-hmm. at night. So, like, before we go to bed, it turns the lights off everywhere but the bedroom, and it actually turns the bedroom lights on to 10%, right? So it's, like, mm-hmm. a nice just way to go. So I say, like, hey, set bedtime, and then it's like, okay, I've set your bedtime in your humble abode. It's like, shut up. Shut up. Like, it gives me this, like phrase like this long phrase where the echo just goes okay right and that's it it's all i ever want but the home pod yeah. like it said to me out two days ago it's like i have set bedtime in your humble abode it's like shut up you stupid thing i don't care like i just want you to do it like don't give me all that nonsense yeah but. siri for sure needs what carrot has the, the ability to set the verboseness yeah and uh, it's like i want to I want to turn it all the way down. My frustration with that is in doing the lights, you know, just because of the way our house is set up, there's always somewhere in the house where one of the sockets has been physically turned off. And so if we say something like, hey, Siri, turn on all the lights, Siri will always be like, oh, I've turned on all the lights for you. But just so you know, a couple of the lights aren't responding in. You might want to check on that. It's like, yeah. I get it. Every like, don't ever say this to me again. It's always going to be like this every time. Like, I don't need to hear Mm. this whole story about how a couple of the light bulbs aren't checking in. I know they're not checking in. I don't care. Just turn on all the things you can turn on. It's it's good for music, though. (laughs) It is good for music (laughs) and thunder sounds. (laughs) I mean, and also some of the shortcut stuff, it works pretty well, right? Like, I'm still I'm still trying to work out, like, how I want to run all of my shortcuts, like how mm-hmm. I want to trigger them off and what ones I want and what ones I don't want. And I'm finding myself, I'm using the shortcuts way more on the devices than I am just like with HomePod. But I'm kind of, I'm still building through that stuff, but I am building more shortcuts at right faster than I ever built workflows. Oh yeah, for sure. And this is just to go back to what what started this. Th- this is where I find the watch without needing the trigger word is really nice. Yeah. Because particularly in the in the house, because the the, the home pods are not on my account for personalized stuff. So they but they always want to pick up whatever I'm saying. But I find that doing the watch to raise and then talking to the watch tells it like, hey, I'm talking to the watch. I'm not talking to you, home pods. And that's great for doing all the timers. And this is one place where I do have to give Apple total credit because I think we talked about it on the on the Cortex after WWDC. But I thought there is no way that feature where you can just raise to talk to Siri without yeah. using yeah. the trigger word was going to work. Like I was, I was like, like, yeah, there's yeah, Apple, no you can't way, do right? That. Like, yeah, here yeah. we go. We're going to have a million stories, and I have to give Apple total credit. It has not falsely triggered once like they they genuinely nailed that and um, i i thought there was there was like a zero percent chance that was going to work but it turns out jokes on me i've had a zero percent failure rate on it 
I didn't get it to trigger every time, though. I know. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I know you're not. I'm saying like... like yeah, it doesn't always trigger. It doesn't always trigger, but it never misfires. Yeah, it never misfires, which is the much more important thing. <laughs> yeah. You may have missed this, actually, because, yes, you definitely have missed this. And I, I hope I, I can by? give you some information now that you're happy about. Okay. Do you know that there is a way to get shortcuts to talk to IFTTT? Uh, I do. Oh, you found it? Okay. I saw this on... Mac Stories? Yes, I saw this on yes. Federico's site. So did you see my little Roomba? Did you see him? I haven't seen your Roomba. I don't know about this. This is in, in the article. There is an embedded oh, video. Oh, is that your Roomba? Oh, That's okay. little Robbie. Oh, I didn't realize. So like now I can, and I do, I get my Roomba to go and to stop by talking to my HomePod. I, I, I saw that. I actually, I have a little project in OmniFocus called Automate Roomba because... I, w- I want to do the two things, which I'm I'm now like oh I now I know I can obviously do is like you can control Roomba via your voice with shortcuts, which is crazy. Like that mm-hmm. that ability to plug into webhooks, it's like the horizon is open in every direction. Yep. And I know that I can do like, like with Google Sheets and IFTTT. I I've figured out oh I can do the thing where. When the last person leaves the house, the Roomba goes automatically. It's like, oh, this is great. I can't wait to do this. <laughs> Ooh, I want to see how that ends up when, when you set that up. I'll let you know. I'm still at the point. I don't know if you felt like this, but I'm still at the point where I'm not confident sending my Roomba out when I'm not at home. Oh, no. I just get scared that he's going to break everything and get lost again. No, no, no. In our, in our house, Roomba's, Roomba's great. Okay. You, you know, it, we trigger him if we're out at dinner and, and we suddenly think, oh, we'd like to come home to a, a cleaner, cleaner household. Let, let's let's okay. send let's send Roomba out to do his I job. We need to just we just need to get up. It's like sending, sending him off to school. Right. Yeah, like that's, we just that's need to exactly get exactly what to it. it is. Yeah. Yeah. We're just a little you know, scared he's gonna hurt himself. Yeah, you're thinking, oh, he's there, he's got his little backpack, he's dressed all up for the first day of school, and you have to let him go on his own. That this is part of growing up and you ever yeah. gotten the like help I'm stuck notification? Oh, yeah, help so stuck. I, I, it's just not like funny. chewed up it's the rug in the bathroom <laughs> and closed the door on himself. <laughs> the the, fra- the phrasing of some of them is uh, the one that gets me is like, "Help, I'm stuck on a cliff." Yeah, that's like, all oh, I like, got. Hold on, Ruba, like, I'll be right like, there. Where did you go? <laughs> <laughs> it makes me feel like it makes me feel so bad for him. Like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm coming home. Why I'm coming home right now. Use the word cliff. <laughs> Okay, now Mike, you may remember when we first started talking about downtime. Mm-hmm. I kept saying this thing about how, oh, I'm really interested in this, but it really depends on the implementation details. I might find this super useful, but a ve- like a very slight, ooh, going this way or going that way in exactly how Apple implements it will, will make or break this feature for me. And just, just as a while ago, we were trying to get Apple to do things in a certain way with the Apple Pencil. I was like, oh, do it this way, please. Don't do it that way. I was, during the beta process, repeatedly sending feedback about one of the implementation details for downtime. And this has not gone my way. So now... Okay. Now that iOS 12 is out and we have the final version of the way it works, there is an implementation detail that is absolutely killing me. So let me, let me explain. I, unlike you, want all of my notifications to come through the Apple Watch. Okay. Like that's, that's how I want to manage things. Well, yeah, no, I was like, again, I understand that, but you probably yeah. have less uh, notifications than I do an- yeah. anyway, right? Yeah. Uh, as we saw last time we checked our stats, literally an order of magnitude mm-hmm. less. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's a very different situation. Now, here's the thing that kills me. The Apple Watch has no understanding of the concept of downtime. So what this means in practice is in the morning, when I wish not to be disturbed by the outside world, I have been putting iMessage in downtime. Texting is not available to me in the morning on the phone. And it's fantastic. No iMessages come in. 
And what I really love, I don't even see the little bubble, the alert bubble. That's not there. And nothing is in notification center. And it will all just reappear after lunch when I'm ready to be exposed to the outside world. Except that all of those iMessages joyously come straight to my watch. <laughs> and it's killing me. Oh, It's totally killing me that if somebody messages me in the morning, it just boop, pops right up on the watch. Pops up on the watch like nothing has gone on. And that's so dumb. Sometimes there are these situations with Apple where you feel like you get a little punished for buying completely into the ecosystem. Do you know, I'd never even thought of this <laughs> as a thing. So I had been using the feedback system and messaging with some of the engineers, and I got the impression that this was not a behavior that they wanted. And then they went dark for a very long period of time, and I thought, oh, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. And of course... When the gold master came out and it appeared in the final version, this was this was not the case. So the watch has no concept of downtime. So apps that you put into downtime still just are able to be used on the watch. And it's infuriating. And I also think it's behavior that an adult, say, trying to cut down on the amount of time that their child texts would not expect. And I hope this gets changed but it i get the impression that like somebody lost a battle inside of apple and this didn't happen but so i'm just like i love the apple watch so much but this is one of these cases where i'm super duper frustrated because i was using downtime in this very particular way where it's like oh fantastic i can just get notifications from the apps that i want in the morning and i can close off everything else and it works automatically every day and now that doesn't work because all the apps that I don't want to hear from, they're just like, hey, I'm on the Apple Watch. You can hear straight from me. And it's like, what? There's no, there's no sensible way to fix this. And I guess do not disturb. You, you just don't ever want them to come through, right? It's like it's not going to work for you. Here's the problem. Do not disturb is too much of a blanket. It's nothing can talk to you. So for me, when I'm using my exercise app in the morning, it's like exercise app can't send me notifications that this interval is done because we're in do not disturb mode. That really sucks. Calendar reminders that I set in the morning because there's something different in the day that I need to know about, they can't come through because the watch, it, like, it would be in do not disturb mode. Mm. So... Here is, here is the workaround that I have made so far. So if, if anybody else wants to live like me, here's, here's the best I have found, but it's super frustrating. I've set a reminder from myself to manually turn on Do Not Disturb on the watch at night and then to remember to turn it off with another alert in the afternoon. So... Since I have to make a decision about all or nothing with alerts on the watch, it's really important for me not to receive distracting interruptions in the morning. So it's like, well, I just have to put this in do not disturb mode. Like this is the equivalent of why I used to run two watches, but I really don't want to do that anymore. So I've just got to put the watch in do not disturb mode during the morning. Hmm. And then everything else that I don't want to get bothered by on the phone is in downtime, so none of those notifications come through. Mm -hmm. But OmniFocus and calendars and the exercise app can send messages to the phone because now I'm not running Do Not Disturb on the phone during the morning. But it's like it's a frustrating, it's a frustrating and annoying situation because I'm mentally split now between where am I getting notifications from and i loved it's like oh the watch is just where all notifications come from and now it, it's like this split attention but so anyway this is a really really frustrating uh result for me and i'll again put it in this bin that i find it kind of infuriating how the ability to genuinely control notifications on the phone is so limited and especially now with apple having screen time it's like oh great people can know here's where you're getting all of these notifications from but if you want to do anything more than just say no or yes you you still don't have a lot of options mm -hmm. so anyway that's that's the that's the sad end to my concern 
about implementation details. It really does feel like something that will be changed. I really hope so. I really do. It feels like this was just something that was completely missed because it, it goes against everything they're attempting to do here. I hope you're right. I really do hope you're right. But uh, <laughs> as can sometimes happen with these things, if they do want to change it, I hope I don't have to wait a year. Yeah. And I hope that Apple doesn't think, oh, they're cool with notifications now and no more ability to fiddle with notifications is introduced for the next several years. So that's that's always the concern. But my workaround sort of works, but it's just frustrating because I felt like, oh, I was so close. I was so close to making everything work, but it doesn't work. This episode is also brought to you by our friends at Squarespace. Make your next move with Squarespace because... They will let you easily create a website for your next idea or project. Squarespace can get you a unique domain name. They give you access to beautiful, customizable, award-winning templates, and so, so much more, like 24-7 customer support. If you need any help with Squarespace, you've got any questions about how to set things up, maybe there's something you want a little bit of clarification on, they've got that 24-7 customer support right there for you, but they also have tons of great guides. So sometimes you don't need to speak to someone, you can just get an answer by searching for it in their help system. Super, super wonderful. Squarespace can let you build any type of website you want. They're an all-in-one platform that will let you put anything you want together. There's nothing to install or patch or upgrade. They have all the functionality you're going to need. If you want to have a store, you can do that. A blog, you can do that. A site for your band, a site for an event, a site for a wedding. They've got all of the tools built right in. It's so, so cool. And it's why I've used Squarespace for like 10 years now for various projects over that time. Because I know how to build Squarespace websites because it's easy. So you can learn too. And you can try Try it out. Just go to squarespace.com slash cortex and you can dig around, play around. You have full access. And then when you're ready to put your website out to the world, you just sign up for a plan. They're super affordable. They start at just $12 a month and you'll have access to all of this wonderful stuff. But when you do sign up, you want to use the offer code cortex because this is going to get you 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain and it will show you support for this show. So once again, that's squarespace.com slash cortex and the code cortex to get 10% off your first purchase. Our thanks to Squarespace for their continued support of this show and Relay FM. Squarespace, make your next move, make your next website. Last episode, we left our listeners of what had been described by some as the worst cliffhanger in history. Uh, wow. Where <laughs> some <laughs> that's people quite the feedback. Were very, they really want to know uh, what is going on with your home screen. I don't understand uh, what I don't even understand what there is to know about. It's well, there's nothing not a... weird about it. Of course, we just want to know more about it. So, can you share with me uh, an updated version of your home screen and we can take a little look at this? Okay. All right. Let me give you the current version. Uh, Slightly different okay. from the old one, but here here is my screen right now. All right. I will share mine with you too. I think mine is is mostly standard, but, you know, yeah, because there's there's no extra spaces for icons on the Tennis Max, so you don't you don't have like the catastrophe of everything needs to be rearranged because there's mm -hmm. like an extra row or something like that. So yeah, I imagine there's there's not as much iPhone icon shuffling this year as there would be last year. No, but my home screen will definitely have changed since the last time I shared it. There's there I know there's new stuff on there. What a nice wallpaper, Mike. What is that wallpaper? That is the like OG Cortex wallpaper. That looks nice. Right? It's created by the wonderful Simon Buckmaster, and it's the OLED version. Looks so good on OLED. I love it. I love yeah. it on, on the OLED phone. So yeah, that'll be it. that will be in the in the show notes again if people want to check it out. It's really good. It's for the big phone too. It's just something about it. It makes everything pop. The icon colors pop a lot more. Like it, it's really excellent on the on the, the black phone, which is why, you know, you went like the, the OLED phone, which is why you went for an all black, I'm sure. Right. Cause yeah. it just looks really good. Yeah. It's like, you got to go with black on OLED, you know, mm -hmm. at least, at least for a while. Cause it's just, it's so good. It's so super good. <laughs> we can talk about my home screen real quick if you want to, like, I don't know if there's anything specifically new on there, but I'm intrigued to know if you have any thoughts on it. I don't, I have no thoughts on your home screen. It's just overwhelming. It's too much, Mike. Well, I'll ask you, is there any icons that you're intrigued about? There is one on there that I think you might be intrigued about, but you just might not know it yet. Oh, I wasn't I wasn't sure if we were allowed to talk about this. Well, you can we can at least mention it. <laughs> it's the timer, right? It's the timer app, yeah. Yes, yeah, so isn't this some like 
toggle beta thing? Is yes, that what this is? It is, and it's amazing. Like, okay, so this isn't an app that is released yet. I the developer did say that I could mention it. Okay. It is effectively the toggle app that you want if you use toggle because they've built basically a new front end for toggle and it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Like there's a widget, which is fantastic. It shows the currently used one and you can save specific time as you want to activate a bunch. Um, you can then create timers that are saved with Siri shortcuts. So you can ask the home pod to start and stop them, but then you can also integrate them into other shortcuts. It's an amazing app. Oh, okay. That, that is fantastic. I don't know how soon it is before it comes out. It's moving along, but it's awesome. Like, it's really I'll good. Be, I'll be looking forward to that because there are Siri shortcuts that work for the default timer app, but they remember none of the fiddly information that I they care suck. about. They <laughs> suck. They're terrible. This is like, you can set the projects, all the related tags, and name the project. And, and then you can create that as a standalone item, which you can trigger from the app. You can also log just rudimentary times in there. Like they don't have to be saved as like saved times that you can trigger. But then all of the mm -hmm. saved times can be turned into series shortcuts, which can then be turned put into the shortcuts app as well. It's really good. It's very, very good. That's very cool. Like even I don't even think That's the name cool. is finalized yet, but like when this app is out, you can rest assured I'm going to be talking about it again. Um, yeah, you gotta let me know when that one comes. But out. I couldn't put this. <laughs> so this is the thing: is like I wanted to put my home screen in the show notes, but I emailed the developer and said, "Can I mention it?" And they said, "Yes, you can mention it." I love that you've even chosen the clown vomit icon for carrot. Yeah, boy, it's good. Though. Some things never change. I feel like they added that for me. So the timer app has a bunch of colorful ones, but I went with red because it just made the most sense to me. Yeah, it makes the most sense. The carrot one, it's like it could just be anything, you know. Like I, I like it like that. It's good. It's good to have a bit of color on the home screen, especially with the black wallpaper. Colorful peacalc. Yep. I feel like if it, any any one of these things, if they gave you more color, that's what you well, choose. Well, the timer has a six color rainbow option, but I didn't choose it. I'm, <laughs> I'm not out of control. Oh, okay. I'm glad to know that you're restraining your crazy color choices. Still using every slot on your phone, huh, Mike? Well, of course I am. Like, I don't oh, know why the you... content. Mike yeah. wants all the content, of I course. I guess you... this is all on theme. <laughs> Such a, like, a misunderstanding. Like, I like to fill everything up. If it can be filled up, you I'll know fill what? No, it up. I think I, I finally understand. I, okay, if I, can, if I can reframe this in the context of the way your Twitter looks, I think maybe I can understand the mind of Mike a little better. Okay. That that's why you want everything filled up on your phone. So there's, there's not an inch of breathing space. Yeah. If you've got the space, you know, fill it. You've actually gone in the inverse where you've got a well, bigger yes, phone and now you have less icons <laughs> than you did last time. <laughs> I worked very hard to have fewer icons than last time. Yes, yeah. Mike. <laughs> You're doing that hidden thing again. How do you do that? Do you use some kind of guide? Oh, how, how do I get the blank row on the top? Yeah. Uh, I'm actually just doing it in shortcuts. I just, I just made a blank oh. shortcut that does nothing. And then you can set a custom picture. Yeah. And since it's just black, I just put a black thing there. Okay. You should put some secret stuff in there. Oh, what, like like secret launchers? Actually, that's not a bad idea. That's an interesting... Yeah. Uh, it's a way to get a bit more real estate on this screen. I like think you, of that. you press a blank screen and all your hue lights go red or something, you know, like you can just do <laughs> some secret stuff up there. That's a, Actually, that's a great idea. I didn't think about that, but it is a way to have some more buttons on the phone that without the visual distraction of the buttons. Yeah. Hmm. Right, I'm going to give that a thought. That that's, a really that's quite fun, actually. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. So you're still running. All right, I'm looking at this. This is 100% shortcuts that you can see. And I'm sure that the four folders on the top, they contain applications, right? Okay, so yes, although essentially every app is in, just shoved into that first folder. Okay. Right. Okay. okay, but so, like there has to still be apps on the phone because the shortcuts have to go there, somewhere. There are yes, Mike. There are apps on the phone, right? I haven't. Let, yeah. Let's let's not be crazy, uh -huh. Mike. There are apps on the phone. Uh, I I'm intrigued now. Having looking at this, I want to play a little game. Okay. I want to see if I can guess <laughs> what the buttons do. Okay. Do you want to try to like? I'll explain high level what's going on, but if you yeah. want to play a guessing game first, mm -hmm. you go right. No, ahead. no, no, no. So explain high level what's going on, so people can okay. understand what we're talking about, and then I'm going to try and guess what the buttons do. Okay. There's two high level things here. One is aesthetic, and one is practical. The aesthetic one is, I think this phone, the way I have set it up, using 
icons that all match, that have a color scheme that is coordinated between them, and that also, importantly, have no dumb words below them. Looks beautiful. Like Every time I look at this screen, I think it looks really beautiful because it's consistent. It does look nice. And it's simple. It does. It, does. it, it is almost, it's like the perfect home screen for you, yeah. right? Because you are able to force design consistency. Yeah, I can force design consistency across it. And there, there are badges right now because it's the afternoon and I'm open to the world. And, you know, uh, like when we're done recording this podcast, I'll work through trying to clear all of those badges. Mm -hmm. But particularly in the mornings, the phone is just so pleasing to use because the, all of those badges disappear because everything with a badge is put into downtime. So it's like, ah, yeah, what a beautiful phone. So that's the aesthetic target here. Now, the second the second thing that's going on is the whole time I was using the beta and thinking about shortcuts and what eventually led me to think, oh, I think I can actually do this is because shortcuts are so integrated with the system, they have access on this level to all of the apps that Workflow was never able to have. So they can launch all of the apps at a bare minimum and they can do all of these different things. It totally changed the way I thought about the home screen at, from a collection of the most used apps to instead being a collection of the most performed actions. Sure. So that's like, but once you start to really think about that, it changes the idea of what do you want there. And so that's why I've gone for this 100% shortcut home screen because I've I've tried to rethink what are the actions that I want to do and then creating shortcuts that perform that action. Now maybe that's opening an app but maybe it's doing something else. Those are the high level goals of this home screen. And I do have to say, it was experimental last time, but since that show and this show, uh, especially since iOS is now out and more apps are integrating with shortcuts, it's like, this is the way I'm going. This is no longer an experiment. This is my life. I have a question. Um, yes. You said about opening apps. How are you, I mean, because not every app has a shortcut to open the app. So, what are you doing there? Now that Shortcuts is part of the system, I have yet to find an app it won't open. Whereas back when it was Workflow, there were a bunch of apps it wouldn't open. So I have not run into that. What action are you running, though? So Shortcuts has a command that's just open app. And as far as I can tell, that command contains every app on the phone. Interesting. Okay. So when you tap on those, does it immediately open the application or does it open shortcuts first? Here is the one thing that I'm, is a little strange, but I'm absolutely sure some there's, there is some glitchy behavior in the current implementation of, of iOS because I have a bunch of like weird content restrictions sent from myself around the browser as well. Mm -hmm. But because all the way these icons are working is that all of them are actually a little URL. So what happens is you press it, it quickly bounces to Safari, but all Safari has is this URL, which bounces back to shortcuts and then shortcuts runs. I'm messing with the settings a little bit, but sometimes I've run into this thing where it tries to bounce into Safari and it's like, you've run out of time on Safari today. It's like, I don't know, that's not remotely what I want because mm -hmm. I'm just using this to open an app. But it's that is a just like, there is clearly a glitchy thing because I used to be able to whitelist these things. So I think that will be fixed for anyone who's trying it now and is also weird like me and has content restrictions. But it works. Like it just bounces to Safari and then it runs the shortcut and the shortcut does whatever. Now, one of the things that is helpful here is I have turned on the accessibility feature to reduce motion in iOS. And that makes the process of bouncing to Safari and then bouncing to shortcuts almost instant hmm. because there's just there's no animation. Like the screen is just white for a split second while it goes to Safari and then it's immediately in, in shortcuts. And 
Quite frankly, I don't really notice anywhere in the system where the reduced motion bothers me. The only thing is the app multitasker, the physics of it seem a little weird, but I've totally gotten used to it now, and now I don't even think about it. So turning on reduced motion, it's great. As far as I'm concerned, there's no trade-off, and there's only benefit that the shortcuts load way, way faster. Okay, so I'm looking at this now, looking at this screen, and I can imagine that there's a mix of, like, performing some kind of action, logging some kind of time, or opening some kind of application, right? So I'm going to start with the doc, and previous history of this show has taught me that the green plus mark that is launching a toggle timer, right? Yeah, th that one has been on the dock for a long time. Yeah, and I remember that. That brings up a list of all of the possible workflows that I have that are related to timers. So yep. uh, that that may eventually disappear, but I'm still using that as I'm as I'm slowly going through the long tail of converting a bunch of timers over to Siri actions. But yes, that is the default. I want to start a timer. Here it goes. All right. Spaceship, using my knowledge of the apps that you use, <laughs> is going to open Launch Center Pro. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give you that. It does not open Launch Center Pro, but I'm using it as a replacement for a bunch of the stuff that Launch Center Pro used to do for me, right, of like little right, actions. Right. Okay. So now I have just built, <laughs> when I press that, it opens up a menu and it's like, here's a bunch of junk I used to have in Launch Center Pro. That's now shortcuts. Yeah. I've rebuilt Launch Center Pro with a shortcut. So I'm assuming from this, you ha you must have lots of shortcuts because you're you're building shortcuts for shortcuts, right? Oh, Which is yeah. a thing you can do where like you can build a bunch of mini actions and then build one action that calls all those mini actions. Yeah. So yeah. So this is this is like if you have any experience programming at all, it really pays off here because I'm trying to think about modularity of like don't build a big shortcut to do everything build shortcuts that can call other functions and uh, there's some great tricks about you can use the um the pasteboard on ios as a place to temporarily store a value so you can have one shortcut write a value to the clipboard and then it launches another shortcut which then reads the clipboard and pulls that value in so there's like you have a variable that can be passed back and forth between different shortcuts, which is great. Uh, but yes, I'm having lots of shortcuts launch other shortcuts. I built this one that needed that. Like it need, I need for something I was doing. I needed to use the clipboard, and I was really proud of myself that I built like a non-destructive clipboard version mm -hmm. by taking the clipboard, pasting it into a note like that's in shortcuts, pasting it into a text field. Then using the clipboard, and then the final action of the shortcut is to take the original pasted element. Oh, that's clever. So if clever. I have something on my clipboard, I don't want it to be destroyed by running the shortcut. That's very clever. Thank you. I was proud of myself on that one because I was like, hmm, I'm frequently like copying things and then going somewhere else and pasting them in. And if I'm using shortcuts to move between documents, yeah. like in Google Docs, I don't want it to destroy it. So I kind of built this really weird version of like clipboard history <laughs> it's, it's just writing it once and then taking it again all right so the clipboard i'm assuming is some kind of notes or like oh no uh it's a checklist it's a checklist of some kind right it's gotta be excellent guess you're wrong ah <laughs> okay let me explain. We don't really have to go through all of these, but let me explain. Well, you won't two... go. Th I know you won't yeah. go through all of them, right? Like some of you, I'm not telling you what that is, and we have to move on. I know that's how it's going to go. The chess piece in the top left, the blue horse, the blue mm -hmm. knight, and the clipboard at the bottom, both of those are OmniFocus related. Okay. And the the knight is acting as my top level perspective so i have a, a perspective in OmniFocus, like a way of filtering the particular tasks and it's like my number one perspective that i'm using is like high level and super important stuff for the day but stuff that is not necessarily urgent mm -hmm. but things that like man i feel like i've had a great day if i do these things and so i always want to make sure to try to clear that list before i get sucked in by like more urgent things as the day goes on so 
the night is there because I always just want to be able to like, bam, hit that and go straight into this perspective. This again is where like, man, C- shortcuts and Siri integration with all the apps is just amazing because you can just go exactly to where you want in the app. And the little clipboard on the dock just brings up a list of all of the other perspectives I might want to access in OmniFocus. And then I can just select from there and it opens OmniFocus right where I want to be. And it sounds dumb, like you're not really saving any steps, but it totally, like, it again, this is just like reducing a little bit of friction makes things way easier. Well, it, it shifts your mindset. Like as you said, like it takes you away from the silo of apps to broadening it out to think of actions or projects yeah and so i'm I'm, yeah i'm finding that i'm using the perspectives much more than i did before just because it's it's very simple that the step isn't like go to omnifocus oh what state was it left in back up to the main page and then go to the place that i want to go it's like no no i press the button take me to the errands right now you know or like yep Take me to this other place right now. And it just goes. It's so nice. It's it's so super nice. So the those two are for OmniFocus. And let me do a little bit of a diversion here to tell you about the top row of folders and what's going on since we're talking about OmniFocus. So the four folders at the top, I am using as the four kinds of notifications that I wish to receive. Like, what do I want badges for? And so because because these things are shortcuts, shortcuts cannot display a badge for whatever should be on them. Only apps can do that. So I want OmniFocus to be able to have badges because I want to be aware of this number that I'm always trying to get down to zero over the course of the day. So that first folder at the top left with a right, little okay. purple check mark in it, that is the number that is being displayed in OmniFocus. And I have a couple of other little to-do apps in there. Like I have do in there, which has different kinds of notifications for it. So that first folder is acting for me as here are all of the action items that you have to perform in the day. And like it's really important for me to be able to see those badges. I totally love it. And what I really love is that if you force press on any of those folders the system will show you the breakdown of which app is displaying how many number of badges and you can d- jump straight to that app. It's a very nice feature. It's a really nice feature. I never used it before now, but suddenly it's vital, right? Like it's super mm-hmm. great. And then continuing across the top row, the next one over is iMessage badges. Now, the third one over then is my company Slack and then the last one is like miscellaneous other kinds of communication that may come into me. So uh, VIP emails, secondary Slack, a couple of other like communication things. Uh, so the across the top row, wait, it's wait, also wait, roughly wait. ordered uh, in priority. How can you have Slacks in two different folders? Oh, Mike, you can have Slacks in two different folders. Did you not know this? No. Okay. Okay, let me tell you something. Don't tell anybody about this because I'm afraid they're going to pull it. But if you search for Slack in the store and then you go to the spot where it says uh, more by this developer, there is an enterprise edition of Slack that you can download. And so you can have two Slack apps running on your phone. Holy shit. Which means you can have all of your lower priority slacks in the enterprise edition and your higher priority slack in the main slack. Holy shit, that's incredible. But like, what's the difference? The difference is the enterprise version seems to get the exact same updates maybe a week or two later. But other than that, it's the same. Oh my God. We've, we've potentially ruined this by talking about it. But I feel like Slack cares so much about the enterprise that that app exists for a reason. But you've just like changed everything <laughs> for me. Because I'm, you know, like everyone, I'm a member of too many Slacks and I don't need the notification badges for most of them. Or at least I would like notifications, but I don't need them as urgently. Here's what you want to do, because this is what I do. 
that for my company Slack, I want to know right away when someone messages me, right? Because it's like, here's the thing. I want to, I don't want to be the bottleneck. I want to turn it around. Great. But for all of the other Slacks, the iOS implementation of deliver quietly is fine, right? Like when I pull down notification center, I can just see what all of that stuff is. Or when I'm working across clearing these badges from left to right, like I'll get to it. I'll see that there's something there, but it's not, it's not the top priority item. So by having two instances of Slack, it means that you can have two different iOS levels of notification. So it's great. Someone at Slack next week said, wow, what happened to the downloads on the Enterprise Edition? <laughs> Mike, you're not really going to leave this in the show and ruin it for us, are you? I'm going to leave it in. There's, there's no way they can get rid of it. Like Enterprise is too important for them. They clearly need this application. I'm going to blame you if you ruin it for us, Mike. We've got to share this with the people. <laughs> they need to know. All right. Well, I'm sure all the people will be very discreet about it. Uh, yeah. Don't tell anyone. You will have For to reals. download it on different days. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You work together, download it at different times. Yeah. All right. Let me see if I can knock some of these ones out here, right? So okay. the globe is probably Safari. The globe is not Safari, no. <sighs> I, I, I try never to use Safari on my phone. Do you even right. know me, Mike? That's why I have the right. content restrictions All on. right, all right, all right, all right. I figured you'd still want to use the web browser sometimes, though. I never want to use the web browser on my phone. Okay. It's glitchy right now in iOS 12, but I am trying to set it so that the web browser works for nothing but the URLs that Shortcuts is launching. It. Well, let, let me take a second shot and say it's something to do with maps. It is maps. Okay, yeah. great. So... This is one of these pleasing little things where I like to have maps on the home screen. I don't use it a ton, but I do like to have it there instead of searching for it. And I do switch between Apple Maps and Google Maps. And I was never going to put two not super frequently used apps on the home screen. But so now the globe, I have one button. It asks me, do you want Apple Maps or Google Maps? And I just pick Ooh. which one and then it opens it. Ooh, you know, just for stuff like that. So, That's really clever. Because you could even like have one for Slack. Like, which Slack app do you want? Exactly. Do you want the good one or the secret one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's like the red icon at the top, which is the database icon. Yeah. Th that's a similar thing. Like, there's just a bunch of sort of related but not super frequently used apps under there. And it's like, great. Okay. I can just pull up this menu. It's. It's easier than swiping down and starting to type the names. It's just like, boom, I hit th I hit that one. It's like, oh, yeah, I want Anki right now, the flashcard program. Oh, launch that thing, go. Uh, so it's a really useful thing to think about if you're going to try to run a, a shortcuts-only home screen is you can clump together similar things that you would never want to take up four slots on the home screen. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can knock out the rest of that third row. Okay. Books. So that's probably Kindle or iBooks, right? You got yep, you yep. open either. The thing that's nice about the books one is I launch it. It asks me, what are you reading, nonfiction or fiction? I select. It starts the appropriate toggle timer and then opens up Kindle. Heck, like, but it's just, yes, it's just it nice that I don't have to do the timer as a separate thing. So here's one that I built, which is kind of similar. It's called Show Prep. So it, I leave it in my widget. So I use the widget for this on the shortcuts widget. Mm -hmm. Um. So I press that button. It asks me, which show are you prepping for right now? I'll tap the appropriate show. It opens the Google Doc and then sets the show prep timer for that show. In right, total. yeah. Yeah, it's great. Right, so it's like little stuff like that. This is what Shortcuts is so good for. All right, the next one has got to be photos, the orange flower. Yep, yep, just photos. And then you got music is the yep. pink music note. All right, so that's that row taken care of. The one below it, the microphone, it's something podcast related. Okay, so this is this is one of the first ones that I made. I'm super pleased about it, and it it helped cascade this whole thing into existence. It's not really complicated, but it's nice. So if you're me, if you're Mike, you're walking along in the world, you know, you're just thinking thoughts, and you'll think, oh, I have an idea for something that I want to talk about on a podcast. Now, what you don't want to do is then open up your notes app and search for where the note for that podcast is 
then tap on it and then insert your cursor into the right spot and then start typing. Because ideas, they, they're ephemeral. They can fly away at a moment's notice. So when I tap the podcast microphone, it opens up a shortcut and it immediately gives me a text box to type whatever the thought is. And then when I'm done typing the thought, I hit OK, and it brings up a menu. It says, which podcast is this for? I select it, and it automatically dumps it into uh, the bare note that I'm using it. And very nicely, mm. it prepends as opposed to appending. So it's at the mm. top of the note. It's not at the bottom. Now, I mm. have very few podcasts compared to a mic, but I think you in particular may find that a super useful shortcut to have on your home screen. I do, but I use Apple Notes for all this stuff, and I don't think I can do that. So you cannot do the app pen prepend thing with Apple Notes, and this is where I've actually shifted a ton of my storage stuff to Apple Notes, but I'm leaving the podcasts in bare precisely because of that ability to say, like, I can pick it goes here or I can pick it goes there. So I've tried with bare a couple of times to move my podcast notes stuff to it for the app and prepend. Mm -hmm. I've had two problems of it. One, it doesn't do as good a job with adding URLs to notes as yeah. notes does. Yep. And the other, the conflicts, are, they drive me mad. There's, like I've I found it to to duplicate notes to deal with conflicts. They may have gotten better at this. I hope they've gotten better at that. But like so, when I use so many devices, right? Like I would add something on my iPhone, then I would add something on my iPad or from the extension, and yeah. then when I open up one device, it's like ah, we created three versions for you because we don't know what to do with it. See, this is much less of a problem when really the only iOS device you're using is your phone. So. I don't run into the duplication problem so much, Mike. But nonetheless, you may be able to find another solution. I know that Evernote has shortcuts to append, prepend to notes. Maybe you want to give Evernote a try for your show notes. Don't even. I can't. <laughs> like, it, you know, the Apple Notes one works pretty well. Like, I could actually just, I could create, I was thinking about it as we were talking, create something that just opens the specific mm -hmm. note. Right. And then that would probably be enough because I do have that thing where I have to search through all the notes. Right. Like, where is yeah. the note that I want right now? Yeah. Ju just opening to the note you want is already saving you a bunch. So, yeah, you, yeah. Like, you should totally build or something like, like this. You know, I could do something where I could create some text. And then, like, so the first thing I'm doing is either recording or writing like the text down. And then it copies it to the clipboard, then opens the note, and then I paste it in. Right. Yeah, like th those are the types of things you could do. Okay, so that makes sense. This is an example, though, of where I think it's really important to think about it from action center rather than app centered. And when mm -hmm. you're thinking about it action centered, it then becomes obvious what I what I want to do right now is write down an idea. So like, hit me with the text box so I can type things in now, and I can do the fiddly stuff about sorting later. I don't want to do what a, what an app-based world requires, which is the total reverse. You've got to do the fiddly stuff of finding the right spot, and then you can write down the idea that you're, you know, you're barely able to hold on to with your fingers as it tries to flutter away. Like that, you want to do it in the opposite direction. The blue kind of credit card looking thing, I assume it's something money related. That's a good guess. It's an index card is what it oh, is. And okay. that is my version of the podcast thing, but for OmniFocus. So it's the same idea. I hit that little button. It's like, here's, here's a little index card of something that I want to keep track of. I type in whatever it is. It can be an errand. It can be, oh, I need to reply to this person. It can be, here's a thing I need flagged in this, whatever it is. And then the shortcut then brings up like the, I think I have like five or six here are places you might want to put this in OmniFocus, and I just select the one, and then it, boom, goes right into the system. It's so beautiful now with OmniFocus 3, like with all of the correct tags and in the correct folder, in the correct project, and it just goes into the system, and it's, it's so good. nice. Yeah, it's really nice. I got that wondering eye. <laughs> oh, I know. Mike, Mike, let me tell you, OmniFocus 3 is really good. I mean, I know. They, um, 
I'm still wait OmniFocus. I'm still I'm still waiting for that floating time zone fix. You told me it's coming. I know it's coming. That's what I'm still I'm, waiting for. I'm it. not even gonna look at it until they add that, but if they add that, I will look at it again. But let me tell you, OmniFocus three, it's so good. Can I can I tell you my favorite OmniFocus trick mic or should I save it for later? No, you can you can tell me. Okay. I have one of one of the things that's hiding under my launch center replacement is the action that then brings up the shortcut, which brings up all of my templates for OmniFocus. One of those templates is, of course, travel. Like, oh God, I'm going to travel somewhere. Now, when you travel, there's things you can't bring across security, right? Like they won't let you bring water. It's like the little hassle thing. So there's always a bunch of stuff you want to buy when you're at the airport. You want to get some water for the flight. You want to get some almonds or some food or what? Like you want to have just like a couple little things that you can only buy past security. So I've always had a whole list of these things, but I sort of forget at the airport to actually buy them. So I wanted alerts for when I arrive at the airport. Hey, buy these things. You're going to need them. But of course, there's many airports that I go to. How will I get an alert at that airport? The answer is I just tag every one of those items with every airport in the world that I might be at. All of those tags will trigger on the location of showing up at that airport. Oh, f*** that. Get out of here. I hate you. It's so good. That's insane. You could do this, for example, with grocery shopping. You could have a tag for all of the grocery stores you might go to, and it will location trigger at any of them. How reliable is it? It has worked 100% of the time for me. So, like, as soon as you get there, it pops up, and it's like, hey, you got to do this? Yeah, it, it actually, it almost always works, like, as the car is pulling up to the airport, which is perfect. Like, that's just enough time where it's like, ah, it's popped up, there's five uh, things you want to buy. I hate and you so much. I can get through security fast enough and I'm on the other side and I'm buying it. But it is, it is like my default tagging list for that is is hilarious. It's like, so, here we go. London Heathrow, Amsterdam Schiphol, JFK <laughs> Airport, San Jose, LAX, LAS. Right? Like I've, I've got 10 of them in there for all the airports I've been to. Let me, let me confirm how this happens. You have to like start the workflow so they're in your inbox or whatever, right? And then when you arrive at the place, those active tasks will trigger. Is that how it works? You... In OmniFocus 3, you can associate a tag with a location, mm -hmm. and then you can say that this tag with this location should trigger either upon your arrival or departure from that location. But what is it triggering, though? Like, is it triggering a task which is already active? I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Right, so when you get to the airport, like, what is right. OmniFocus doing? OmniFocus will show on the screen you have five tasks at this location. Right, but you have already put those tasks into the system beforehand. So like when you've left in the morning, you're like, I'm going to the airport. And then it adds like 10 tasks into your airport project that won't yeah. fire until they hit a location. And when you arrive at That's the correct. airport, those tasks that are already in OmniFocus have been surfaced. Okay, cool. Yes, that's right. That's what's happening. Yeah, it's it's part of this whole template. Because I was wondering, like, th the ultimate thing would be that, like, you arrive and it creates a project, right? Now, that would be, like, next level. So, like, you don't even need to think about starting it, right? <laughs> like, you get there and it's like, oh, you're at the airport. That means you must need these things as opposed to you saying, like, and again, like, it's too much. It might be too much to ask, but, like, that would be the dream. No, 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 no. Like, Mike. Mike, no, but just just so you know, like what what you're asking for is totally possible, because you could just have a a project with tasks that recur after a day at a particular location, so that you just say like here here's here's all the things I want at an airport. All of these are recurring tasks that appear after one day, and then every time you arrive at the airport, those things will trigger, and they just they're tagged with all the airports. Like what you're asking for is totally possible. Right, but they have no dates, so they don't show my forecast or anything. Right, you like, again, this is where you can oh, filter it out. God, I hate you. Look, look, Mike. What's going to happen here is you know you're going to be using OmniFocus three, and you also know you're going to end up with a home screen that has nothing but shortcuts on <laughs> no, it without like, words. Right? We all like we all no, know this no. is where it's going. Listen, we all know that the Cortex subreddit is going to be filled with nothing but hundreds of, of screenshots of people's beautiful, shortcut beautiful shortcut yeah. home screens. 
I I am already know what future Mike's path is. Be, like because I know okay. I'm going to listen to this tomorrow. Okay. And when I'm listening to this part when I'm editing, I am downloading OmniFocus, right? Mm-hmm. And and starting to set up at least that trip thing so I can play with it and kind mm-hmm. of get my sense around how that works. Like yeah. I already yeah, can just, see just my future. I know when it. it's going to happen. Yeah. All right, let's try and finish this thing. I know that that football isn't a football. So, right? Like I know that's not launching like BBC Sport or something. So, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> So uh, you, like you don't you don't know me. Is it man. like Iron Man or something? Like what are you doing with that one? What is that? I have no idea what that could be because I know the icon that I know it to be, it's not representing that. <laughs> okay, it's the closest I could find to the concept that I was trying to express, which is physical health. Right. Okay. So that one is another collection of apps mm-hmm. that I don't want any particular one to take up the home screen, but all of them together are worth a spot on the home screen. What you have done here is create the ultimate folder, right? Yeah, it's a better folder than folders. Because you can have a list of apps that open or actions. And I feel like this this whole home screen is just one of the examples why... You and I were so excited about shortcuts integration into the system at WWDC yep. is because of like back then the vision of this beautiful home screen was was not even the tiniest of sparks in my mind. But we both knew like, man, this is going to make some really interesting stuff possible. Yep. And this to me, I, I feel like, oh, this is such a good example of this is not remotely the intended use case of shortcuts. But because it's so flexible and because it's so powerful, here's here's something that I've been able to do that would just never have been possible on iOS's gone by. So I'm like, I'm so happy with it. And what shortcuts can do is just amazing. And every day, more and more of the apps are updating to be able to do even more with shortcuts. So... This home screen, it feels like this is even just the baby steps of what is ultimately possible. So I'm super happy. 